Auf geht's mit der dritten Folge von The Stanley Parable und dann schauen wir mal, was wir denn uns diesmal erwarten wird. Hohoho, ho, ho, wir dürfen gespannt sein. Ja, das können wir springen. Gut, dann da können wir Stanley los. decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his coworkers. He never ja. functioned well doch, by doch, himself. Doch, doch, doch. And constantly ja, ja. needed support and guidance from others. So the thought ja, of total ja. solitude was terrifying to him. Es ist When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. hundertsten Mal nervt der Typ. Ah, so. Und wir werden uns mal wieder gegen ihn wieder setzen. Stanley entered the lounge. Können. He was horrified to find not a single person here. He decided he would walk up to see his boss, hoping that he would find an answer there. Nö, nee, 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 machen wir nicht. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Nein, wir gehen runter. Was auch immer. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, of admitting that he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, was it really worth taking that risk? All because he believed everyone had disappeared? His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought okay, to himself, no. maybe I am crazy. Everyone I so know, simply vanishing out of the blue, there's almost no other explanation for it. And a nagging fear began to creep up in his mind. Questions that had been there all along. He just hadn't put his finger on them yet. For example, why couldn't he see his feet? When he looked down, <laughs> yeah, yeah. why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, uh, these skip. rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Was he just walking around in circles? Where uh, am I? He thought. Sieht so aus. And the more he found himself unable to answer these questions, the more questions continued to arise, until he came to the issue that had been slowly boiling, until he could ignore it no longer. Why is there a voice in my head, dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Suddenly, every door slammed shut. No! Stanley screamed. I need to get out of here. I need to know that there's something out there. I need to know it's not just all in my head. And he screamed and clutched at his skull as the voice grew harsher and the music in the background rose higher and higher. And then, moments before collapsing to the ground, Stanley clenched his fists and screamed to anyone who might be listening, I'm not real! I'm not real! Don't believe any of it! None of it's real! And then everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She got dressed went to work, clocked in, clocked out, and then she walked home. But her walk on this day was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Moments after seeing him, she would turn, run to the nearest police station, and call for an ambulance. But for just a few brief seconds, she merely stood there, unable to move. The tragedy was not the death of a single person, It was that she would never know this man's story, never hear in his own words what had happened to him, or what he believed had happened to him. For to know these things would be to exist inside the head of the man himself. So all she could do was observe from a distance and pity him. But Mariella had places to be and people to meet with, very important people, whose impressions of her would affect her career and indeed the rest of her life. She stood there for only a moment, looking down at the body, and then she ran. Ja, damit beschließen wir schon das dritte Ende von The Stanley Parable. Und da wir noch Zeit haben, machen wir einfach noch mal direkt das vierte Ende hinten dran. Diesmal müssten wir... This is the story of a man skip, named Stanley. Skip S. Geht doch. Diesmal 
Big game. Danny decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly Kannst needed for eine Minute mal die Schnauze halten. Eine Minute. So total solitude was terrifying ja, obwohl, to him. Ja, obwohl, ne. Minute Erkältung ist wohl so praktisch, das ist eher eine Erkältung. Ja. This was not the correct way to the employee lounge and Stanley knew it perfectly well. So he turned left at the first open door and walked back in the right direction. Nee, 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 nee. Stanley was so nee, bad nee. at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't yep. fired years ago. Maybe this is why everyone had left. No one wanted to be around someone as bad at listening as him. And since he was walking into the middle of nowhere and thus ruining the entire story, Stanley decided that he would punish himself. So when he came to the elevator and the doors opened, he stepped inside and pushed the button to go up. Yep, das werden wir tun. Hoch. Hm. <lacht> Kann ich hier wenigstens so eine Aufzugmusik einsetzen? So. Oh, geht ja. War ja gar nicht so lang die Fahrt. Hm. Sieht genauso aus wie jeder andere Korridor auch. Das ist neu. Was sind die Dinge aus Half-Life? Hm, rein da. It almost perplexed Stanley that he had actually gone and stepped into this metal trap. After all, it should have been no surprise that this thing would lead him to his death. But he thought to himself, um, this is simply the price to pay for ruining a perfectly good story. So he resigned and willingly Herde, accepted his fate, the inevitable end toward <coughs> which he had spent so long stumbling. Farewell, Stanley. Uh, ich Ah, ist doch blöd. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as he sent his subject down the conveyor belt and into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Ich lebe aber noch. Hm, Freiheit. Hm. Oh, runter. Gibt wohl keinen Weg. It's a shame then that for all his work it was such a meaningless victory for the narrator. Did he really think he would accomplish anything by murdering this disposable vessel? Okay, das sieht ja alles ein bisschen buggy aus. Ein bisschen sehr buggy. Das Spiel ist so bescheuert. Oder er gesagt, die Mod. Drehen. Nee. Every possible so choice Metallen. Stanley could make had been designed for him long before he ever set foot here. The narrator wanted to kill him. Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start. Freiheit, frische Luft. There's no salvation for Demo. either of these two, I'm afraid. The narrator had as little power over Stanley as Stanley did over the paths that he walked. But listen to me. This story is not oh, over. Nee, you can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now, and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time... Komm, mach was. Hm. Ja, ich würde sagen, dann war's das mit der dritten Folge von The Stanley Parable. Zwei Enden haben wir gesehen, noch zwei vor uns. Also, haut's rein und habt einen schönen Tag. Ciao.